All right, so let's get into responsive layout basics using Flexbox. Before we actually start making the layout, which we will be doing in this video, uh, just a refresher on Flexbox. So elements normally have a display of block or a display of inline as their default from the browser. So display block would be our things like our divs, our header, our footer, our main, our h1 all the way to h6. Our paragraphs, our lists, and list items are also included in that. And we have our inline elements like our a, strong, m, and span. So those ones stay in the flow with the items that are around them. We are going to be using divs for our columns and we can't, you know, because divs are blocked, they're going 100% of the width, but they're also, even if we change that, even if we say they're 10% width, they're still gonna stack one on top of each other. We can change this behavior by setting the display property to flex on the parent element. When we do that, it changes the behavior of all of its direct children. So if we have something that looks like this, so this is say a section of content, and then inside that section, we have four divs like this. If we set display flex on that parent section, the items inside of it will turn into columns automatically. So they'll switch and it, they won't stack. They'll also no longer be 100% width. They're going to shrink to fit the content that's inside of them on the horizontal axis. So it's very, very different, but it's also very easy to do. So we're going to practice with this layout here. It's not the most beautiful layout, but it's going to bring us into being able to do some fantastic stuff. Because if you see here, we are looking at how we can do this for a big screen, but we're also going to get to the point where we can make this work on a small screen as well. We want it to work on both. There's a lot of interesting things that are in this layout. So we have content that's stretching the full size. Here we have three columns. Here we have two columns. These two have different colored backgrounds on them. This one is bigger than those two. And this one's even bigger than that. So how can we do this? How can we set it all up to be the right sizes and to get spacing between them and get all these different things that we need in here? So we're going to be doing all of this, not in this video, but over the course of the next few videos. But we're going to sort of set the stage with the HTML in this one. We're going to be ignoring the mobile layout for the moment. We're going to focus on how we're going to set up our columns and organize it because this is the most important thing now is how is this content organized? The hardest thing to do with a layout is when you look at it, just breaking it down in how you're going to organize it. Where do you need a div? Where are all the different pieces going to fall? It's not super easy at the very beginning. So the very first thing is all of this is being held in the middle of the screen with a certain size on it. In the last module, we had three containers because we needed backgrounds that were full size. In this situation, we don't need that. So we can have one single container for all of the content on our page. And that container is now this light pink background. But what we also need is we need to create some columns. So I'm going to put a div of columns here, and I'm going to have a div of columns here that's going to have these. So once we have those columns in place, then we need to create individual the individual columns. So I have this here is one columns and then another. You'll also see these often. Um, there's a popular framework called Bootstrap that will say row. So that's a row of content with three columns inside of it. So we have our, you know, we have a row of content or my columns container. I'm going to call it columns because it's my columns container. And then inside my columns container, I have three individual columns. And then over here, I have this big one that's going to have display flex, and then it's going to have two of them inside of it. So this is sort of the structure of my site when I'm breaking it down visually. The reason I know that I need to have these green boxes and the for each individual column is because if not, if we didn't have those and I just put my all my H2s and my paragraphs directly in the columns parent, then all each individual paragraph and each H2 would become its own column. They would each break off into their own things. They wouldn't keep, they wouldn't stay organized. So when we look at something like that, we have to visualize where each individual column is so we can organize it properly. And in this case, this is how I'm gonna be organizing it. So I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna see if you can go ahead and do it. I've already set up the file. I've linked to a style sheet that has nothing in it. I've given you all the text. So just organizing it, look at this picture and go based on what you see here. So go ahead and do it. If you don't want to copy and paste all the text, at least make the structure like you've seen me do in previous videos where you're putting in all the elements. And then I'm going to go through and do it as well. And I'll bring the text in. So if you don't want to bother copying the text back and forth, you don't have to. But if you want to go through the full length, by all means, go for it. I'm only going to do that in this video. In the next one, we're going to start applying the CSS to it. But if you want to jump ahead and just try and do the whole thing on your own, go for it. Uh, in the next video, though, I am sharing the colors, uh, the exact colors that I'm going to be using and the font sizes. But if you just want to estimate and try your best to get it to work based on what you've learned so far, go for it by all means. But if you're not too sure on the Flexbox thing, it's been a little while. Um, 
you can wait for me. So let's jump into it right now. So here in my body, as I said, I'm going to start with a div with a class of container, which is just going to hold all of my content. Now we could, in this case, actually set a width on the body, but I tend to try and avoid doing stuff like that because all of a sudden somebody wants to come in and add like a new section to your site that's actually full width. And then you go, oh man, I have to change so much content. I have to change all my markup. So I like having a container or a wrapper that's going to contain all of my content and not touch the width on my body personal preference there, but I like thinking ahead and thinking things are always changing. So I don't want to run into any problems in the long run. In my container, I need my H1 and I need my image. So that's going to have an SRC on it and an ALT on it. And then we can come down and start doing the rest of it. So we need our two parent column containers. So that was what I said I would call columns. So div class equals columns, close div. And we're going to have two of those. So you can copy and paste that or just write it all out depending on how fast you can type. And there we go. We have the basic structure. Now inside of this column, I'm going to have three actual columns. So I'm going to do a div class equals just col because it's faster to write. And we can close that div. And I'm going to take that and we need three of them inside of here. And then we're going to take that same thing here and I'm going to have two of them over there. So that is sort of the basic like actual structure of my site right now. The different pieces are in place. Obviously, I need to put the content inside of those columns. But from a structural point of view, this is all of my layout stuff. Like this is my main layout items that I've put into place. Now it's just adding the content to those to the layout parts of my markup. So let's go through and do that really quickly. So here it would be an H2 followed by a paragraph. I'd have the same thing in the next one except in this case, we actually end up with two paragraphs. And then my last one, we just have a single paragraph all on its own, which is the exact same thing we have here. And we can copy this one and bring it down there because that is what we have. We have H2 paragraph. This is an H2 with two paragraphs. This is just one big long paragraph and H2 with a paragraph and then our individual paragraph there. So now we not only have the structure of it, but we have all of the content elements in place. We just have to place the content actually in there. I'm not going to do that in this video. When you start the next video, all the content will already be there. All of the colors and font sizes will be on a slide in that video. So if you want to jump to there now, you'll be able to try and do all the styling and all of the content will already be in place for you.